A while back, the critically praised Guacamelee 2 made its way to PlayStation 4. I reviewed the game over on our PlayStation Enthusiast channel, and what you're about to be watching is that review. I've been playing the Nintendo Switch version recently, and it's the exact same experience. It plays great, it runs great, it looks great. And that's why I decided just to show you guys the PS4 review that I did a few months ago. So without further ado, here's the Guacamelee 2 review for Nintendo Switch, and technically PS4. Drinkbox Studios is a renowned indie developer that brought us indie darlings like the touchscreen slasher Severed and the zany platformer Mutant Blobs Attack. However, it was the original Guacamelee that really put the studio on the map. Gamers everywhere fell in love with its blend of wrestling-based combat, precise platforming, and wacky humor. If you love the original Guacamelee, then you're in luck. The long-awaited sequel, Guacamelee 2, offers more of what you love and simultaneously goes above and beyond all expectations. Before I jump into the gameplay specifics, I can't go without mentioning the game's fantastic presentation. While it is aesthetically very similar to the original, I can't really complain. Guacamelee 2 is bursting with charm and personality. The game's Mexican fiesta setting is always entertaining and constantly changes in style. There are two separate realms that you can switch back and forth between, both equally as pleasing to look at. Much like the original Guacamelee, the sequel is written fantastically. I constantly find myself smiling and chuckling throughout my journey. There are several callbacks to the original game and even some nods to other game franchises. As silly as it may sound for a game like this, I recommend going in without watching tons of gameplay beforehand for spoiler reasons. My one one gripe with Guacamelee 2 is the fact that all of your character's progress that you made in the previous game gets reset, and you spend a large portion of the game collecting all the abilities that you unlocked in the last game. However, it does make sense that Drinkbox did this in Guacamelee 2 because of how the puzzle sequences fall into place. If you had the same abilities at the beginning of this game, you would miss out on a lot of fun and challenging puzzles where you have a limited supply of moves at your disposal. So the progression system works, it was just kind of a bummer seeing a lot of the same moves. However, Guacamelee 2 does have a few new tricks up its sleeve. Early on, the game introduces a slingshot mechanic that lets you catapult Juan into the air. Your trajectory is based on where you're located when you press triangle. It's a neat new mechanic that calls for a lot of fun puzzles. This isn't the only new feature. Guacamelee 2 puts a lot more emphasis on chicken gameplay. Yes, you heard that right, chicken gameplay. Not only is Juan's human form given a new skill tree and abilities, but even his chicken form can learn some awesome fighting and traversal moves along the way. Chicken Juan plays just as important of a role in Guacamelee 2 as normal Juan. You're constantly switching back and forth from the two in order to fend off against specific enemies and make your way into certain areas. I thought this was a nice change from the first game, where the chicken was basically only used for squeezing into small sections on the map. One thing I didn't expect when jumping into the sequel was how unrelentingly difficult it would be. And no, I'm not talking about the main storyline and objectives, but rather the optional platforming sections that earn you extra money and upgrades for Juan. These sections were a joy to complete and I could not walk away until I finally figured out the puzzle. Notice how I said puzzle. That's because Guacamelee 2's platforming is more than simply jumping. You have to use certain attacks on certain enemies, specific jumps at a precise time, and constantly swap between realities in order to succeed. All of that and more is involved, but the crux of it all is the reality swapping aspect. It's seriously up the ante, and it's where the game really shines in comparison to the first title. Lastly, Guacamelee 2 introduces 4 player local co-op. While I was only able to try out 2 players, it's a fun time to be had with friends and adds even more chaos to the combat of Guacamelee. I look forward to playing more with my wife and collecting all the extra treasure chests throughout the map. Overall, Guacamelee 2 feels like a beefed up version of the original game, and I don't mean that in a derogatory sense, as the original was a masterclass of game design. This sequel offers rock solid platforming, funny dialogue, and addicting as ever Metroidvania mechanics. It's challenging, rewarding, and full of spunk. I recommend it as a must play for anyone who likes platformers, co op titles, and of course, Metroidvania games. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this review, or maybe check out our other reviews that are on the screen right now. I'm Brett Medlock, and I will talk to you guys later.